Hey there, what's happening YouTube? Thanks for stopping back into the channel today, Ray here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. Today, we're talking jump packs. I know I've done a video before on some of the more, I guess, cost-effective jump packs, but today, we're looking at the best of the best ones on the market. We're gonna go through these, what they're rating, and what they're actually capable of. Stay tuned. So over the past couple of months, I've been doing a lot of testing and a lot of looking into more jump packs. So I've done a review before, especially here on the GB70. I've compared it to like the Duracell as well as an ancillary unit that I got off of Amazon. We did a review and this one definitely came out on top. Now we've got some bigger ones that we're also gonna be throwing into the mix on what's the best for what situation you really need. So the three contenders that we have for us here today, we've got our GB70, which we definitely have already tested. We've got our GB150, the bigger, badder brother of the Genius Boost line. And then we've also got our SP Tools, SP61073. Now these three are very different units when it comes to, I guess, on the paper marketing. Now marketing with all these jump packs are very, very different these days. And it almost boggles your mind to wonder how do they come up with these numbers? If you look at the Genius Boost line, they are boasting the GB70, puts out a peak amperage of 2,000 amps. 2,000 amps. Whereas the GB150 bumps it up to double that, 4,000 amps of peak output. So 2,000 amps, 4,000 amps. The SP Tools one here, this one's rated at 1,600 peak amps. Now don't let that fool you, this thing is a beast in its own but the rating system is a little bit more, I'll say, down to earth. Now, I can't say that I'm a real expert in the field when it comes to electricity and the output of these units or how that they actually measure these outputs to market. So I am gonna do my best to be able to show you guys how well they actually output, maybe some of the features on these, and we're gonna get some meter testing in here while we're using it on an actual jump unit. So today we've got my Duramax behind the camera here. It is actually draining the batteries down now. The batteries actually are kind of on one of their last legs. It's been really hard to start, especially in colder weather here in the spring, and it really needs new batteries, but I've been putting it off because I really wanted to test these units out thoroughly before I could get you guys a good video, before I get some new batteries in that unit. So we're gonna be going through these. Uh, the Genius Boost GB70 is gonna be the first one up on the docket, and we're gonna run the truck down to like six or seven volts. And that is gonna be down to the point of where these units are actually still able to read the voltage, but it's at the lower end of their spectrum. So we've got the truck, and we're gonna put it down to like six or seven volts. And we're gonna start off with the GB470, put that one on, the GB150 and the SP Tools one. Each time we'll kind of drain it back down a little bit just to be sure the battery is at the exact same level. So now that it's drained, let's go hop over to the truck. All right, so we've got the Genius Boost GB70. It's gonna be the first one up today. As you can see, we've got the truck battery drained down pretty good to 7.3, 7.4 volts right there. So they're older batteries, they're from like 2015, 2016, something like that. And they are both rated at exactly the same 800 cold cranking amps. So not real big batteries either, but they you know, are on the end of their life cycle. So the first one is gonna be the GB70 here. We're gonna be hooking these up in the exact same way, the exact same place, fully charged, and we're gonna be hooking them up to the jump posts right down here at the exact same spot for each one of them. We're gonna be hooking it up to the battery hookup as well as the ground plate right there. So, Genius Boost 70 up first. Get you guys set up right here. We'll hook it up and we'll see what it'll do. Set that back up. Turn it on, it reads voltage. Okay. 
And that is a big old negative right there. So as you can see there, this big high compression Duramax 6.6 is not able to be cranked over with the GV70. So we're gonna let this drain back down a little bit more and then we will get our uh, GB150 up and see what that'll do. Now on for the Genius Boost Pro, the 150. Now, when I had this video posted prior to, there was a lot of skepticism on how this portion of the test was run. Now, I'm not gonna redo the GB70 uh, because we all know that it's not gonna jump this. Now, the GB150, I wanna give every bit of clarity and I want to give this every bit of a chance that it possibly can to be able to jump this vehicle. So I'm showing you everything here. You're gonna be able to see all the connections as well. I've got my meter, it's just a cheap $15 or so meter and leads here not hooked up to anything else at all. So we're gonna let those sit there for right now. Also, I had people saying that, oh, you might've hooked something up to the other battery. Well, I wanted to show in this circumstance, we are taking the other battery totally out of the mix. The negative post is off of that battery. That battery is totally unhooked from the system. So we are going to go back into this view right here. So you can see the jump post, you can see the ground post right here, you can see the meter, and you will be able to see the leads of where we hook it up. So first off, we've got the GB150, we hook it up, turn it on, 100% on our battery life. So showing 100%, we are hooking up our meter. Let's see if I can get this wedged in here, right? So for it to show, There we go, 5.2 volts, right around there. Get rid of the glare so you can see, 5.2 volts there. Okay, so we're gonna leave that right there, and then we're gonna hook up our Genius Boost to these areas. Get this positive one on. Hooking it up in the same spot to the regular jump post, make sure we got good connection there, and then also onto the ground post. Well, you can see it reads five 5.2 volts. We're going to turn on the unit. Oh, we don't want to lose our connection here. We well, see it turned on to nine point some volts. I'm also going to hold the exclamation point because you guys said that this boost was absolutely necessary. So hold that. That all comes on, and we're going to go and test it here. will not start the vehicle leaving it there it's still going look it's still showing that voltage hold the boost button again come on you got a boost baby Let's try it again come on will not jump the truck it will not do it. We lost the connection in there. Try it one more time. Holding the boost button. cannot jump this truck will not do it in any way shape or form we have tried every single way we have the same connections and we will go ahead and put the other unit on from sp now all right so now back same exact test but with the sp we're going to zoom in on our negative posts again see what i'm doing here you can see the negative post is not hooked up to that battery that battery is not hooked up at all. There we go. See what I'm doing here. And then we've got our meter here again. Also not hooked up to anything at all there. Nothing there. And we are going to hook the leads back up to this battery. Five. 
five volts right there no glare five volts staying right there now, we'll go ahead and we'll show the SP 100% right there 100% okay still showing the voltage there unwrap my clamps and hook them up to the same exact spot in the same exact way. Hook that up and turn the unit on. Let it check for its voltages. It sees it and it starts boosting. It starts the truck. How about that? It started the truck. Now, I have a feeling that how this one outputs the voltage, it pretty much killed it in that stance. So let's see what percentage we're at now. Well, it still says 100%. So I don't know. What do you think? Do you think it'll jump it again? Let's have a look. All right. Let's have a look, see. Turn the unit on, allow it to get its polarity. Green light. It started the truck a second time. Two times. Okay. Now we're getting, we're giving it all the beans that we can on this one. We unhook everything and we'll see what percentage it is at now. 99%. Still at 99%. How about that? That is pretty awesome, guys. So that just goes to show you how everything is hooked up. That is the way you're supposed to do it. And this jump pack will jump a 6.6 Duramax from one single battery that is severely discharged. All right, so let's look into a couple of features that each one of these have. Uh, first off, we'll see the design of them. As you can see, the smallest one uh, by quite a bit is gonna be the SP Tools one. It is also the lightest out of these as well. Uh, they all have very nice heavy duty clamp sets. That's a big difference between a lot of the cheaper jump packs and the better, he more heavy duty jump packs. They have really, really great clamps, all of them. I give them a big A plus on their design of that one. The gauge of their wire is also another big thing to look into when you're looking at jump packs. All of these, I would say they're about yeah, a four or six gauge wire right around there. And uh, it looks like the GB150 is about one gauge bigger. It says it's four gauge and the other two are six gauge wire. So really close in the way of wires. Uh, the clamp size, pretty comparable uh, as far as the, the uh, clamping area right there the sp tools one is about and we'll say uh 25 to 30 percent larger on the clamping area has a really nice spring tension to it the noco ones are a little bit less in that respect but they are right there the one thing that i do like about the noco over the sp is it has some place to actually clamp the leads to when uh you don't have the actual unit in use uh but the difference in that is these leads do not come off of the Genius Boost units and they do come off of the SP unit. So you're able to take the clamp and the leads off right away and just put this into its own case. For some people that's nice in the way of the package. They don't always like to have them taken off and obviously some guys around the shop might end up losing certain things. But you also have to think of it this way. If for some reason those guys who lose things all the time also like to break things all the time, you end up breaking one of these cables on the NOCO, you're not going to be replacing that one. You break one of these cables or one of the clamps on the SP, which I highly doubt it because these are much higher quality and much more durable than what even the NOCO ones are, you're actually able to replace the cable set on there. Not sure the price on that one, they didn't have that listed, but because it is detachable, those are going to be able to be replaced. So that's an extra thumbs up for something that's not thought about too often at all. 
Now, how about little additional accessories that come on and with these units? Now, each one of these have quite a few different outputs and inputs into them as well. All of them have a light on the outside of it. Uh, none of them are really spectacular. You're not gonna be putting out you know, 500 to 1,000 lumens or anything. It's just so you can see what you're doing under the hood. So not even gonna throw that one into the mess because it's not really many people care about that one or if it has an SOS function on it I'm not going to be putting this on the side of the road for SOS I'm going to be using it to jump start my vehicle so also another thing that people really don't care about all right now when we're looking at voltage in that means when we are charging the unit the NOCO has two versions they have the mini USB in as well as the 12 volt source in to where you can hook it up to your cigarette lighter and plug it into there comes with both of those cables. Does not come with a USB wall adapter though for this one, so just an FYI there. Out, it has a USB 2.1 amp output and one 12 volt output as well. So if you're looking at just doing uh, 12 volt output sources for, I don't know, something to charge and you only have a cigarette lighter female adapter, I guess, I don't know. Not really, you know, too keen on that one. Same exact outputs on the GB150 as well. Nothing different when it comes to that one. Pretty much these two are the exact same unit, just the size of it. The thing I really do like about the GB150 is that it has the voltage meter on here. So when you hook it up, you can tell what voltage that your batteries on the test vehicle are sitting at. The SP one, uh, we hooked it up there and it showed just a percentage right there. Uh, really didn't give me a voltage of the vehicle that we were reading. Now, how about the outputs on the SP? We've got the power for the light here in the front area and then we've also got a couple of different uh, things here. We only have one input, but it comes with two different cables inside the box that go into the same plug. So you've got a 12 volt inverter uh, that goes directly into that one that you can plug into your cigarette lighter. And it also comes with a wall charging unit, US based, plugs into the wall, plugs directly into there, does not come apart, separate for USB use or whatever. Other outputs that it has, it has a 12 volt, three and a half amp output. It also has a 19 volt, three and a half amp output, which usually around here, I'm not sure exactly what you're gonna use a 19 volt output for. I guess some computers, laptops or towers might have some kind of an output. So I guess if they're thinking that you could use this as some sort of a battery backup for that one. Two USB outputs, uh, five volt, 2.1 amp, both of those for the outputs on there. Also with the 12 volt, that one is 3.5 amps output too. So a couple of more outputs when it comes to the SP tools unit. Safety features on these are also very similar as well. They won't let you hook anything up backwards, reverse polarity, uh, also won't let you hook up to anything lower than a certain voltage. You can bypass it on these units, but you know, you got to know what you're doing. So it has the safety security measures to keep that from happening for people that don't exactly know if they've got something hooked up correctly or not. If you don't have a good connection, also it won't connect and it won't start the cycle of jump starting if it doesn't see the connection in the first place either. So that is a pretty good thing for most people, especially if you're giving these to your, you know, your wives, your kids, they're not used to using these so often. So you kind of want them to be dummy proof and that all of these definitely are. So really, what is the big difference between the internals of these? It's gotta be in the batteries. The actual battery substance of these, be it you know that they're all lithium ion, they have a different capacity and a different density of their capacity of charge. If we look at some of the capacities of these batteries, that's where the proof kind of comes through. The NOCO uh, Genius Boost, the G GB70, this one is rated at a 56 watt hour battery pack. So 56 watt hours of potential battery output. The GB150, that one is rated at 89 watt hours of its potential battery output. The SP watt hours, 336 watt hours of output. Now that is an insane amount of output. So 
pretty much in all. I would say that if you were to say the total capacity availability of these are probably pretty close, but the watt hours of output that these things have is totally different and that's why they're rated so differently. This one is able to expel that energy a lot more and a lot faster than the other Genius Boost models. So if you got a small car lot and you have just a whole bunch of little cars that need jump throughout the day, these are probably gonna be your go-tos. These will last longer, they hold more of a charge and they will disperse it, I guess, slowly over the day and will hold more of that charge. If you want all of that output real quick in a big engine cranking scenario, it looks like this SP Tools one is gonna be the way to go on it. When we think about the output that we put these things through on the truck, it was an exact even draw load from the truck. If we were gonna put this on, say, something smaller, obviously the draw load is going to be a lot less. So say we were trying to jump like a smaller V6. This battery pack would probably be able to jump it upwards of 20 times, maybe even 30 times, whereas this SP one, you might only get seven or eight out of it. So really it's gonna be a difference in what kind of circumstance you're gonna be using these battery packs for. The Genius Boosts have been pretty much at the top of the market for the last five or six years, but they have also been known for not being so well represented in their number of mounts. I mean, honestly, after seeing that test with the truck, how could you honestly say that this has 4,000 amps of output? That's, that's a lot of freaking power. Do you think that this little jump pack here, even though it is pretty big compared to these two, is able to put out 4,000 amps? Not really. I really want to know how they get their numbers in saying 4,000 amps. Is that over the amount of jumps for the whole capacity of the battery? You know, each time you use this jump pack, it's going to put out 300 amps. So over the lifespan of each time it jumps that vehicle and that 300 amps of output, is that a total of 4,000? That very well may be. You know, on this truck, the two batteries that they have, they were rated at 800 amps. So a total of 1,600 amps between the two. So the batteries being at half charge, that makes sense for this one being rated at 1,600 amps and it actually put out 800 amps full load twice that makes a little bit more sense now advertising wise like i said we need to get a hold of noco or we need to see where they come up with these numbers because now their age of new math i don't know how they're getting it but us as technicians we're not being blindfolded by it now really i could ramble on and on and this would probably lead into another video on the advertising and holding these companies accountable for the numbers and the amount of pledging that they put on their packaging Seeing these numbers, 2,000 and 4,000 amps, we know that, that that cannot be output in a single jump. That's over a whole bunch of them and they need to advertise that different because people are taking that at face value and it's not able to keep up with it. Having these numbers where it's rated at peak 1,600 amps or at a full 800 amps steady, that is a more plausible amount. And I would have to say that SP, I applaud you for putting out regular numbers that are actually plausible with what the unit is putting out. So a big thumbs up to the SP unit. I think it takes the day in this one. Like I said, it's also a preference point to what kind of jumping that you guys are doing on the lot or at the dealership or shop that you're working at. Now, how about the price wise? I know we've got a big price difference in a lot of jump packs. I mean, there's even jump packs right now on Amazon that you can get for like $35.99, 40 bucks for a jump pack, which is crazy. But if you have a smaller vehicle and that's what it's used for, then all right, go for it. But we're talking about professional heavy duty line jump packs today. The GB70, which is gonna be the smallest one that you guys in the shop will ever wanna use, this one is gonna come in right around $100, $130 or so. Depends on what kind of sale you get on it. Now the GB150, this one all day long is $299 on Amazon. Usually they might run a sale for like $279 or something like that, but most of the time, $299 is what you're gonna get this one for. The SP one, it's pretty new to the market and it did just come out. Now because of that, they are bringing some really great pricing to this one as well. You believe that you can get this one for the same cost as the Genius Boost GB150. 
299 bones is what you can pick this one up for. Us as big diesel technicians, we need to get these vehicles jumped and this is gonna be the one to do it. This is gonna get the job done and I give it a big thumbs up. Now, as always, I will have the link to all of these jump packs down in the description below. So if you guys wanna get a hold of them, that will be how you get them and how you purchase them. So I wanted to give a big thank you to these companies for putting out some great products. And as you guys can see today, the big winner obviously was the SP Jump Pack. So hopefully you guys are able to check that one out. It is some new technology. Like I said, I am not an expert and I don't fully understand exactly how the lithium cobalt batteries in this one and how the high density technology that it says actually works. But we'll just say the proof is in the pudding and you guys saw it in the test to be actually seeing what this tool can do. Well guys, that's about all I've got for you today in the way of these jump pack testing. If you guys like this content, make sure you subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you turn on that bell notification so you get notified when I come out with cool, awesome content just like this one today. I appreciate you guys tuning in and as always, you guys stay awesome.